How's it going, everybody? My name is Matthew, aka EasyBot, and I have another special treat for you. Today, we have Eric, aka Circo, live in the studio. He's out of frame right now. I'm right here. He's, he's going to come into frame here. Um, Circo just came in from Denver to play an event that I put on with Basement State and Modular Seattle, the Mod Bang, Basement State, Modular Seattle. He was the closer at our show, did an absolute fantastic job. Circo is really well known for his live improv techno. Nothing pre-made, except for a few things, which we'll, we'll discuss. Like, can't go in there with absolutely nothing. But nothing pre-made, makes all the patterns from scratch, and puts on these great, unique shows. Every time, completely different show. Definitely a unique experience compared to what I do in my personal workflow. So, come on in, Eric. I'm also going to... Um, slide it. Yes, yeah, slide on in. <laughs> Slide on Slide in. into the frame. Um, and I'll try and duck out so the camera actually <laughs> focuses on your face now and then. I'm going to turn on this microphone, and if the audience wants to tell me that uh, if it sucks, this little microphone, if it makes, like, phasing or something, let me know, and I'll just turn it off. Huh. Or maybe you won't. Is it, is it bad? bad. Is this bad, bad news? news? Somebody want to let me know? know? Well, howdy, howdy, yeah. howdy. Well, I'll well, keep it going, going until, until someone tells me it sounds like trash. Yeah. Let's, let's, um, let's, take let's take a look at what Circo's working, working with, with really quick. Double, double box. box. Okay, turning it off. <laughs> nice. Okay, that's, we never learned that lesson, do I? I echo, always do it echo, over echo. Again. Okay, <laughs> it's, it's out of here. Here we go, let's take a look. Bam! That's a whole screen full of gear. That's a, a huge <laughs> screen full of gear. I oh, can't look yeah. how perfectly that fits in the corner, though. That's so nice. It's nice. I like. It. We still have the. Little, the little Didn't even plan thing. that. Uh. So yeah, this is Eric. Yes. What the hell? What the hell? Yeah. So yeah, this is my my live rig that I play uh, that I travel with. Um, believe it or not, all this fits into carry on luggage, which was kind of like. I forced myself to design my setup so that it would fit in carry-on luggage because the idea of checking luggage when I travel scared the crap out of me. So I decided not to do that. So um, I have a 6U84 modular, which fits in one side of a rolling carry-on. And then the rhythm and a couple of odds and ends fit in the other side. And then the other boxes fit my backpack. So that way I can carry everything on with me when I travel. And uh, it gives me a ton of flexibility, a lot of voices. We were talking about this last night. We can walk through this and just kind of see the, the number of voices, but to have options because um, like I was saying, I, when I play, it's, it's improvised. So I don't have things preset and changing from pattern to pattern where it would change presets. So I have to have kind of sound design all done ahead of time and ready to go. And then I can just play that as I play. So, um, yeah, so basically for voices, I have, um, so there's eight voices in the Oxy Coral. Uh, there's eight voices in the Assimilator. A single voice oh, here. Dude, I didn't even notice that was an Assimilator. How did I, I even have the black panel Assimilator. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> it's, I had to go for the black click. So what do you, okay, yeah, you can keep talking. So, about so eight voices here, eight voices here. A single voice here, but with a ton of flexibility with the Bastille Pizza. Uh, another single voice with a ton of flexibility with the, the BIA um, from Rose Engineering. And then obviously 12, the way, the way I use this is basically I use the eight um, digital voices. I can use the, uh, the other ones on a different channel and we'll talk about the sequencer in a minute. But um, so I've got 12 voices here and then basically 12, it's eight, like as you know, eight synth voices, but 12 channels, 12 tracks on here. So it ends up being, I think 36 or 38 total voices possible 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 choices yeah and so um like when i go into a set the you know i'll start off with blank sequencers like i have here um for everything that is kind of melodic um on this part of it which is 
melodic. I use air quotes for melodic for my music. Mm -hmm. um, it's more like percussive with tone. Um, is pretty much everything that's here. And then the rhythm is, um, I sequence the rhythm from within the rhythm. And this is all kind of drum sounds dedicated with a few uh, pads that are exceptions for that. Um, but that's um, built as kits as well. And, the, and it's nice that the rhythm has kits built in so you can have kind of, it gives you some variety. Um, in, I uh, notice in this kind of gives away your workflow a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It's, it's such a great screen that I think is very underused by a lot of people just because most people aren't doing that a lot. They're going to be on the track and they're going to adjust the level. So what I do is um, in the syntax, I'm sequencing it from the Oxy One. And so the syntax is basically a, a kit of sounds. So I've got all of these sounds already set that I've sound designed before. I know they kind of go together and they, they have a sound that I like. Um, but I don't have anything sequenced for them. And then I'll sequence that live kind of on the fly in the show. Oh, and that. then I can mix them in from here. You know, having a having a mixer screen is uh, is super handy. Um, and it all goes into the Octatrack hiding underneath. Yes. Yeah. With right And this gives away why it's there. This is your performance template, which, as I've told you before. Which one are you using? Like three versions ago, Techno Template, because okay. okay. I love it. <laughs> but this, um, between your template and the Oxy One, those are the two things for me that, that kind of revolutionize the way I play. They, they're really kind of core because this gives me the ability to, in effect, make it sound like a DJ set. I can use transition effects. I can use, you know, I could do buildups and breakdowns and, and risers and all kinds of stuff that I can do using these effects um, that I couldn't without this. And then having the Oxy being able to sequence live on the fly, you know, create things that are in key, but random is, is kind of, you know, super important to, to the web. Right. So what, wait, I didn't, I don't remember. What's the black box doing? Black box um, basically has two jobs. Well, one job, it's anything that's a time stretched sample. So I have some atmospheres in here and vocals. Which do you think is a better time stretch? Black box or Octatrack? Um, I actually, I honestly haven't used the Octatrack time stretch much because um, I don't use it as a sampler much. <laughs> I really use it I mean, for a mixer really. or, you know, I would use it as a drum machine and, and kind of sequencing one shot. So not really time stretched ones. I love the way this works as far as time stretching samples and the way that I can just leave it on this screen while I perform. And when I want to launch something, I just hit it and it launches just like a clip enabled. And it's, and it plays in time, you know, and then I can go in and I have, Level and pitch, filters, I've got, you know, effects. effects, everything that I would want in there, which I don't necessarily use a ton um, because I have it kind of set up the way I want it to be set up. Like what are, what are, is it, okay, the, I see India. So I do remember when you played last Yeah, night, that was that also, vocal. Like and then this one, stuff, this one the, the rhythm, where it said rhythm over and over again, that's okay. that vocal. Okay, got it. Right. It's all being clocked. Yeah, it's all being clocked. So the, the Oxy clocks the Oxy. everything. So it goes MIDI. The, so MIDI signal path goes Oxy into the Oxy split, which is kind of underneath our picture over here. And that splits it out into different channels. Um, okay. So I've got one going into the choral so that I can have uh, an Oxy choral uh, sequencer. So eight tracks here, which is the eight voices in the choral. Those are going out via MIDI. Then I've got the syntax sequencer track, which is eight voices going to eight voices here. And then um, the other stuff are being sequenced via CV gate from the, yeah. This. So then I've got clock coming out of there as well into the things that need clock. There's three, a couple of them chained together. Yeah, sending out clock that way. So I, I can't help myself. Is this the expander for this with a black panel? Yeah. Where did you get that? I just got it like four days before I came. Wait, what? Where did um, you find I it? I actually ordered it from the same dude that did this one. He's in Canada. He's in Toronto, I think. That's oh, because I have the black from. panel and I, it's driving me crazy. Yeah, it's, um, I looked it up and it, it ended up being the same guy on Etsy. Oh, I'm going to buy it. Yeah. It's immediately. Link to it on the done. video because let's yeah. hook this guy up because he makes sweet. Okay. What I love about his panels is a lot of the black panels that you get, the aftermarket ones, have a ton of stuff on them. And I like just black like I, well, it's, it's I like the aesthetic it right it's, nice, it's very yeah. technical i mean it, it matches the <laughs> electronics yeah. this is the only like the black box which isn't actually yeah the, the gray box the gray <laughs> box the lie 
I do have a bit box, which I don't have in the case right now that with the black panel. Oh, Just nice. Added, nice. Added to go oh, a black panel box? That, that was yeah, amazing. it was pretty cool. That You can actually order it that way. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then I did swap these out. Um, I got the anniversary edition Syntax, and so I swapped out all the buttons. So the, my silver one has the black buttons on it now. Mm -hmm. And I did this because for me, it made this, especially if you look at the, if you can see like the red function button, it makes it look like a Mark I it does, syntax. Yeah. It has that same aesthetic as like the old rhythm and the old Octatrack. So I thought that was pretty cool. It does look cool. It looks unique. <laughs> I, I actually didn't even. Yeah, I think this looks better with these. And I think the silver one looks better with the black one. <laughs> so <yeah. laughs> so the work, funny. like this, this catches your attention, I think, because not <laughs> I think it's a little uncommon that your mixer is turned completely down on any of your, right? Because, but because of your workflow, mm -hmm. you start with your mix, everything down, yeah. and you bring everything in. Something else is unmuted, of course, kick drum and rumble bass. Right? Well, but so I have those muted, so I'm on the mute mode here. So like when I started last night, when you said, okay, we're ready to go, I started by doing that. Okay. So now I'm going, and then I can bring things in. So like I can... Take me to tech. Why don't you take me to Techno Paradise really quick? <laughs> Let's and go then, to uh... Technoville. <laughs> so this is actually a sequence that was left over from yesterday. Okay. <laughs> it's, uh, that's why I still had something in there. I was like, oh, this sounds a lot like last night. sampled that into that then. Oh yeah.
<laughs> there you go. Dude, so good. <laughs> it was just as good as last night. <laughs> but different. But different. That's the whole yeah, point. Yeah. But different. As actually, as you were, okay, so as you were doing this, I, I wouldn't, it was like borderline epiphany type stuff happening. So I'm watching, like, what's Eric doing? I, I like, I understand the fundamentals of the concept of, of what you're doing, mm -hmm. but you having so many voices is not something that I usually jump to. Like mm -hmm. this idea of your, your skiff having like a million voices in it. But I realized it was kind of cool. So when you brought all the mix down on the syntax, mm -hmm. you brought in a new element and then track three came up, which hadn't been up yet. And it was in a whole new sound. Yep. I was like, wow, you could really just, you don't, you don't have to change anything. You have so many voices yeah. that you could That's just That's why sit I don't do program same. changes or anything like that. Cause you don't have to. I don't have to. Yeah, it's basically yeah. like just the whole thing is there for you and you yeah. can just tinker to your heart's content and just exactly. play with dynamics. Exactly. And that's, you know, we've talked about this before, but for me, techno is drum groove and sound design. Right. Like those are the two things. Like it's not chord changes and melodies and things like that. Like, yeah, some melodic techno is, but that's not for me, the techno that I do, the kind of hypnotic sound, it's not that at all. So I have drum grooves. Here, and I have things that are pre-programmed, but as you notice, they're very basic. It's like a four on the floor kick, an offbeat hi-hat, a 16th note, you know, yeah, close classics. Hat. It's like the classics, just so I've got that to kind of go back to, because I'll be playing along and it's like, oh, this really needs an open hat. And I can just do an open hat because right. I know it's there. And, right, and yeah, there's no smart. reason to have to just program in an open hat because you yeah. already know what it's going to be. But um, with the with the rest of it, it's really the sound design part. And that's what, like these modules that I have and the syntax, they're so flexible as far as the sound design that you can bring in a sound with a really simple pattern. You know, like when when I was just bringing in like the one that was on track two here. So that's just those two notes. Right. Pitch, sample, and hold random or something? Yeah, and it's it's actually basically just a, you know, it's it's a, a sound that I made in here, mm -hmm. obviously, because it's, it's a synth, right? Right. But the idea is that it's just that. And with these, I can go in and I can, with the Oxy, I can dial in notes that will be in key, so. Right. Right, right. So I can keep, I can keep the patterns really simple. I can do it with sound design and a couple of simple notes. But then with the sound design, you know, going into, that's probably not the best example because just because of all the stuff that there's going on. So I'll just go back to this one. So like this one's really simple sound, right? So if I go into that track, then I can do all kinds of stuff to that. you might generate a melody in there yeah exactly watch <laughs> out <laughs> well, i like that and obviously dissonance is kind of cool in techno too so being able to do something like this and then as you all heard when i was playing a lot of this a lot of like so everything pretty much goes on ascend to the endorphins ghost which if you're not familiar with the ghost it is a delay reverb Distortion, overdrive, compressor, uh, uh, can't remember what else, all in one unit. And uh, the sidechain pumping. Yes, and so it's got a you comb can, filter. Yeah, exactly. And so you can adjust the amount of sidechain, which is cool. So I have sidechain coming in from the kick track over here. And to. so then you can adjust how much of that you want. And so basically going through the ghost, it gives me those kind of really atmospheric sounds without having to have a bunch of modules and effects chains and all that stuff. So just playing this along, if I just send to this and then move the filter. Yeah. And you can pick frequency ranges. And it almost sounds like another instrument. Right? right, that's being added in, doing a pad or an atmosphere yeah. or whatever. So you don't really need that because this really helps with that. And obviously it's always in key because it's playing what you're sending it. <laughs> so right. that's the thing that I love about that. So really it's like about super simple patterns that I'm generating on the fly and then really flexible sound design tools that I can tweak while I play. 
What I okay. So my favorite part about the setup, besides that, I love that the the improv thing. I think is such a. I think it's a really cool experience. Like just knowing that. I wish I had addressed that before you played last night, just so people could understand <laughs> that it's a different kind of show when people do that. Yeah. But the the setup that I really why I like this setup, you know, besides that play it well, is that really what this box is is a mixer and like ten synthesizer. Totally. Right. It's just like you have a plethora of mono sense. Yeah. Up here, and you know, potentially a poly if you want it. Yeah. So I mean, there's there's sixteen voices plus that effect chain in, right. in a single module and just, that's for, in just basically for atmosphere totally yeah i like i if if you want something for atmospheres this for me is the best thing there is but if you want a distortion there's better ones a delay there's better ones. right, right. Like reverb, that's same as all multi-effects yeah units. but this one it you know being able to have that kind of effects chain in one place and being able to just tweak it with the filter and change the and whether the it's background. material or not so funny like this it's such a noisy unit it is a oh really noisy God, unit loud. and i don't mean that in, like in a negative sense some <laughs> people might not like a noisy unit if you're making what you're making i love it noisy stuff can be pretty good yeah. for me like a lot of it sound design is about this like every little thing is i want you to hear yeah. every amber of it so i have if a hard my setup was clean stuff. i would need modules to dirty it up so right. like i'm good with like awful noise floors like this one that's just the background of that. There's nothing going through it right now. I hear it. It's loud as hell. I remember. <laughs> I played I played a show a while ago, and it, we had this great sound system. It was like this warehouse event, and I went early for my sound check, finished up, and stopped everything. And I turned, and I was talking to my friend, and the sound engineer was like walking around the room, and he was like, from <laughs> and i was like oh sorry that's me and i pulled down the sound he's like oh thank god i thought there was something wrong with my system i'm like no it's something wrong with mine like it's just loud and you're like there's nothing <laughs> wrong at all in fact it's perfect the it, way it is for me it's great <laughs> not optimal if you're looking for like pristine clean sounds yeah. yeah but that's why like for example like all those bass sounds that you heard all were coming from the basto pizza that was kind of a mind blower for me what is the basto pizza again so the basto pizza is a multi oscillator uh fm synth and so you can really control like wave shape and the amount of wave that fms oh the that's other, right. inside that I did a video on this but then i have works. this going through a wmd carbon and and if you notice that I patched while I was playing, I keep this cable here unpatched. And this is I did so notice. it has multiple outs. So there's a there's a main out, there's an octave out, which I have going into the two here, and they have the mixed. So that's one sound going into the mixer. But this other one is a pulse wave that just is the output of whatever the CV is. It doesn't do gate, it's just the pulse wave. So I patch that into the FM of the carbon when I want it, and then dial in FM just to like. So like if I, if I don't have it, it sounds like an FM basin, right? Right. It and sounds very techno. Yeah, exactly. But then if I add in that, you don't hear it now until I dial in the FM here. But listen, and it's yeah. just like one little thing, and it's totally grimy. There's a similar. And then you trick change you do the wavescape. MS20 and the boat grandmother. Yeah. And then you just add a kick. And then you have techno. And then you have techno. <laughs> and there it is. <laughs> but yeah, so I just keep this like just hanging in case I ever want it. Like this is like my extra grimy patch. Yeah, let's dirty it up. Yeah. Let's get nasty. But as you see, that one module has such a range of sound that I only really lately, just you know, for the last few months, I've only doing I've only been doing bass from this module because it's got so much variety that I can do all kinds of different basses over the course of a night. Okay. And you, you just never So question. Why did you like what makes you pick the module that you pick? Like why do you why why is the coral and I don't picture the coral being in your setup. Because yeah. it is not a techno machine. I mean, it can do every synth can do techno. So, so it's really funny. Thing. It's but funny I mean, you say it's that. A, it's a very beautiful sounding oscillator. The, the Platts oscillator. I, not that you wouldn't use it for techno. I'm just, yeah. there are so many options out there for really crunchy, great sounding, atmospheric. What, what makes you pick what you pick? So the coral, the, the beautiful thing for the coral for me 
is that it is um it's eight voice multi timbral in one module just like okay. a plat so it's like having another okay, it's like it's, like it's basically the syntax in so there so so what i don't know if you've messed around with the choral much but so you've got eight voices and each of those eight voices has the eight plats voices right so when you talk about having sound design variety in one unit you've you got go 64 MIDI options yeah it? oh so that's what you're doing okay yeah. you're yeah Thanks. so um and on top of those eight different like eight different voices with eight different engines per voice that you can select from. It also has a built-in filter and a built-in reverb and envelopes. Can Everything. You do, can you just do poly? Can I play sure. it as like a oh, and that's the that's stuff? the super cool thing about this. So you can set up what's called I don't even remember the name of it. Manuel's going to kill me because I forget the stuff that I don't use. But there's a thing that's um, so when you can set up MIDI, it's like a MIDI group. And so you can decide like channel one can be one you can know, use and so you can set voices. a MIDI channel and decide how many voices poly you want it okay. to be. And like the Digitone. Yeah, exactly. Except okay. this one has eight instead of four. Well, Digitone has eight. Oh, you mean eight tracks? Yeah. Essentially. Okay. Right. Okay. And so, and what's cool about it is you, so you've got eight, um, you, you can decide how many voices of polyphony you want. So you could basically set it up as a four note polyphonic with four mono voices. Is this something you, you do as an HTML? No, you thing? just do it here. Oh, you do it right on the unit. Yeah, basically, like you press this button down and you get different colors, okay. and each color means a different thing. It's kind of it's a little bit of a pain to kind Got of it. get your right yeah, like at first, pro, like programming with just colors. Yeah, especially well, if, I mean, if, you if somebody's colorblind, it would be a nightmare. Yeah, colorblind yeah. people. Yeah, yeah, they're out of they're out of luck. Yeah, but it's no, it's really it's. That's why I have it is just because of the flexibility. And okay. I, I wasn't using it a lot. It was going to come out of my case because when you would switch voices, so you know, like when you when you have the Platts voices, you've got like, let's say you're using an FM voice, the control buttons mean different things than when you're using a different type of voice, right? So like, okay. a, like a super saw voice or whatever. Right. And this is the same way. So I was like, wait, what voice am I on? What does this mean? And it's hard to tweak if you don't remember. But they just released it, recently released an update for this that now you can do a three VCO Moog style voice. And so I have all eight of them set up as that. So the buttons are always the same because with the three VCO Moog style voice, I can get all the sounds I want, like every possible okay, sound. Okay, that's very cool. So it's basically like having eight Minotaurs or eight sub 37s in one box right. now, which power per HP is oh yeah no I, I okay so, it's really a lot so, so the, that's why it's in the case and the other two voices it's very much the same it's variety so the um you heard the pizza and then the the bia like everybody that does modular knows the bia it's just got a crazy range of voices that it can do from super percussive like drum voices to tonal melodic stuff to whatever so it's yeah it, just a lot of variety per space okay oh that makes sense because it wouldn't Actually, when you look at what's happening here, and like you're like 16 voices in this case, you don't see 16 voices. Mm -hmm. You see a simulator, choral, BIA, and pizza, mm -hmm. as far as individual units go that right. generate sounds. So we yeah. see four modules equaling 16 voices. Yeah. So you're really going about how much can I fit into something I can put in the carry on? 6284. That's my. That's the. Anytime that's I want something is. new, I go on modular grid and I'm like, okay, what do I have to take out to put in that Got new thing it. and move stuff around to make it fit in this case? Okay. So it's really about that. It's yeah. not even. It's not the voices so much as it is how much can I squeeze out of a module in the footprint? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, it had to be this size and then. After that, it's like, okay, what I have, like, I just recently added the assimilator. It's, I, I haven't had this in for a while. I had the Bitbox and I had the Ergosynth's baseline. The, the, that's what this took the space of. Those one. Typically, yeah. when I listen to your music, I don't really hear like something I consider a baseline. Um, like I do, of course, because right. there's bass, there's hella bass. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, uh, like, the Ergosynth's baseline is a semi 303 ish mm -hmm. style and it's sometimes i do add really the roland but... boutique 303 to this setup i played a i played an acid night in denver recently mm -hmm. and because it was acid night i brought that out and you know, there's some things on my instagram you can see videos and it's definitely i'm playing acid yes. you're yeah. definitely on acid. Yeah, exactly and i actually didn't have the 
the uh, black box that night because I knew I wasn't going to use it. So the, the that 303 kind of took this spot. Okay, cool. Yeah, gotta love the 303. I had that out last night. Uh, okay, I have more questions. Sure. So, all right, what I really want to know is what is going on in your mind <laughs> as... <laughs> you could just stop there. What is going on in your mind? That's it. Can you just tell me what you're thinking? I'm very... <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I want to know what is happening. Like, okay, we know why you picked the modules. We know why mm -hmm. you use the rhythm. We know why you use the oct track. We know why you send. You've explained the setup. We know mm -hmm. everybody knows about the oxy one. We're not new to the oxy one concept. It's been around a while now. I think a lot of people have caught on to the workflow. Mm -hmm. I see it all over the place. I feel like you're very responsible for a lot of people <laughs> doing what you're doing. I know a lot of people are using the, the torso, well, the T1 or yeah. whatever, do, to do a similar thing. Mm -hmm. What I want to know. When you are writing your tracks, so when you're performing, mm -hmm. what are you thinking about? And like, I mean, in in terms of like, almost poetically, like, yeah. not literally. What is Eric's thoughts like? What are you thinking about in a poetic fashion? As in, I'm gonna start with this, this uh, dissonant atmosphere, and I'm gonna bring in a thumping kick. Is that like, what are you? What's going through your mind? Like, what is your what is your expression that you're trying to bring to the, what are you, what are you trying to tell yeah, people? That's a great question. Um, it, it's, I, I think, so I have been, prior to doing all this, I DJed for literally decades. Like the first time I ever DJed in a bar was in 1990. So like decades. And as a DJ, you're, you're kind of feeling what the crowd is it, like, what do they need? at this moment right and that's how you select your next track and you're like oh i feel like they're getting a little sick of this they, they need a vocal so you select a track with a vocal i feel like they need something to bring the energy up so you select a track that'll bring the energy up or you add effects that will bring the energy up so a lot of what i'm thinking is reactive to kind of the vibe that i'm getting from the crowd i'm not sitting there sitting ahead of time saying i'm gonna start with a bass then i'm gonna bring in a kick then it's gonna be an atmosphere then i'm gonna bring a hat then I'm whatever it's much more by feeling and that's why I, I need to have this kind of flexibility because i don't know where i'm gonna go and i'm just like that's I, yeah that's why the question's so interesting yeah i just I, the roads yeah I, I somebody said and i've said this a number of times but somebody i heard in an interview a long time ago and i don't remember who it was um might have been surgeon i think or somebody and they were talking about how a live hardware performance in a club setting you know where you've got people in front of you is very much a a conversation between you and your machines and the machines have their their say in the conversation that's why right. i like random note generation euclidean sequencers i like the machines to do things that i'm not thinking of, right. and then i respond so the machine says something and then my part of the conversation is something else then i do something and like i move a filter and the machine says something back so it's very much it's very much kind of an improvisational conversation between between me and the machines. Now, the, the the other piece of that is the crowd, and that's where the kind of DJ thing comes in. Is it's like okay, I'm translating for the crowd. To what the if machines. the crowd isn't responding? Kind of going back to the DJ thing. When somebody when the crowd isn't responding, you have to kind of figure out why they're not responding. And because it could be a lot of different things. A lot of times it's because, well, 100% of the time, it's because you're not giving them what they want to hear right now. And they don't necessarily know what they want to hear, especially when it's an improvised thing, but they, but they know when it's not. And so if you're like, for example, if it's, if it's the first set of the night and someone just bangs it out at 150 BPM, the crowd is going to sit there unmoving with a blank stare on their face, even though the music is banging. But if it's like, like last night when wet paint started and he started and kind of got everybody's head bobbing and grooving it, that's what they wanted at the beginning of the show. Cause they just went from silence to music and you don't want the music to smack you in the face with a sledgehammer. You want the music to kind of massage you onto the dance floor a little. And then it kind of builds from there. And then you've got this other thing that's got something, or this other person that's got something to say and someone else that's got something to say. It's so, like a six course meal. It and is. you're like trying to plan out dessert. It is. I, that's a great analogy as somebody who's <laughs> in the restaurant 
big. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right. It's, yeah, no, and it is very much that. But but to go back to your question of like what I'm thinking, it it's, goes very much to that kind of DJ thing. I'll think like, oh, this this needs this. Yeah. Or I'll be I'm listening to what like I'm jamming out to it too because it's the first time yeah, I've yeah. heard it too. In a musical sense, okay. So maybe back from the poetic side because that mm -hmm. might be too abstract. But in a musical sense, when you want more energy. So I'll get, I did an example of that while I was playing. So one of the things I love about the rhythm is that you've got synth voices on every channel and you've got a sample layered on every channel for the ability to, if you want. And by bringing them in or out, you have the ability to mix them together and create new sounds, which gives me more flexibility. Again, so if I'm like cruising along and I've got just like a kick going and I've got a hat, so this hat is a very simple hat. This is just, if I go to that track, this is just a synth voice hat, right? So a couple things that can subtly bring up the energy. So I'll, like, I'll put this in context so you can hear it. So that gives the, the, the hi-hat a context. If I wanna bring up energy, I'll layer in a bit wider, longer sample. So if I just bring in a sample, and it just kind of gets you more into it, and I've got something similar with the uh, my 16th hats. Okay. And I can do the same, I can bring in. I really like the sound of this one. <laughs> And then something else that's interesting with um, that I've found as far as like adding kind of energy, if you've got a simple hat, when you do something as simple as adding in a delay to it, so like a lot of times I'll do a breakdown where in breakdowns I like to extend out the release of stuff just to kind of make it wider. And then I'll add in a delay to what I'm getting. And it almost acts like a snare roll. And then I'll bring this back down to short again and take this back out. Okay, so I have, it, a, I have it, another that, question. When you're talking about adding energy, those are the things. Like Those you are know, your go-to. Yeah. It's, you know, and before you ask the question, we were, I, I was at Superbooth last year. And are you familiar with Tune Girl? She's this lady from Germany who plays live hardware, just slamming techno. And she's got to be, I would say, in her mid to late 60s. Ish. She looks like your grandma. She plays like in a light blue hoodie. Like, like she, it's, it's hilarious. But her music is excellent. And I was watching her do a performance last year, and I was standing with uh, Analog Kitchen and Travarsi. And we were like just jamming out. We're like, she is killing it. Mm -hmm. And she goes on this thing, and um, we were, we, all of us kind of at the same time are like, she needs a ride. And all of a sudden there was a ride. And we all had the same thought at the same time, and she did it. And so it was kind of like, yeah, that's what was needed there, that tss, 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 just to add that next layer of cool to what she was playing. Right. So, yeah, it's, that's the kind of stuff to add energy. No, it's cool. It's, co it's cool to see you actually explain or to hear you explain your, your thought process when you're like, okay, I can see the crowd is moving mm -hmm. and like they're receptive to the sounds. So they're bobbing their heads. Bum to or, mm -hmm. you know, your go-tos are what you just described. Yeah. And with techno, there's a couple of kind of structural go-tos to get the, the people to get like the stank face and be like, yeah, that's yeah. the thing. Um, very different from, say, EDM. EDM, you'll go through a buildup and the, the drop is bigger than the buildup. Yeah. So you're constantly building and getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Where with techno, the big drops are they drop everything down to a really minimal sound. And so that's why, like with what I was just doing, so if I'm doing like, if I'm doing this thing where I'm building up and I like extend, I extend out the release to make it sound like longer, before I bring the kick in, I'll bring this back down and I might even take the hat out when I bring it down. So it kind of gives you that, that like, you, you build it up broad and then you drop back into a right. groove. So it's tension and release. Yeah, program. exactly. Yeah, so, where, the, where EDM is more tension and tension and tension and tension and tension. And yeah, not I fall, I fall like a lot of the, the stuff that I write where the more melodic stuff falls more into the 
category where I'm like, papa, papa, papa. And at the end, I'm just like, it's just like a <laughs> the chorus. release is change songs. <laughs> yeah, the release is you're done. <laughs> right. You're all cooked. <laughs> I think one of the one of the cool things that you can tell, like from seeing, like I play a lot of lar- hardware shows. You play a lot of hardware shows, um, and you're very experienced in in music production and live performance. And something you can tell when somebody is really experienced in music production and live performance, but especially live performance, is how long. I know you're not counting. Like you're not counting the polyrhythms and mm-hmm. stuff that are happening, but how long you sit on a beat before you start to change and evolve mm-hmm. is it's obvious to me as a as a viewer that you know how long to sit there without having to count it. Mm-hmm. And that's something that I think is really hard. Like that takes a long time to learn. That's something that I feel like I I feel like I I do an okay job at that, but without talking about myself about it, I feel like in the hardware community. That's a thing that I see a lot of. Yep. Um, both sides of it. Both sides of holding it. Holding on too long holding and on too changing long. too quickly. And changing too quickly. Yes. That and that, I think that for I me, that, I know that definitely for me personally, that comes from DJing. It comes because like when you're DJing, you're playing tracks that are produced. And the producer has figured that out while they're making the track. So I have 30 years of listening to music in a club in that environment, seeing how the crowd reacts to it and go, yeah, they need something else right now. Like there'll be times where like, I don't know if you, if you notice when I was performing earlier, when I'm writing something, I subconsciously, I know that it's going on too long because I didn't write quick enough. So I'll reach over and I'll change something. Not because I I'm saying I you... consciously want to change it. Something has to change right. or else they're going to be like, oh, he's holding on because he's missing something right now. Like he was like, there's a screw up. Right. And so fortunately with this, I can move stuff. You know, we were talking about like the lack of modulation. So when that happens, I need to move stuff because I don't have things automatically moving for me in the background. So I need to kind of reach over and do a thing. Right. It's been going on for too long. I feel like that is that, that whole process of uh, building and growing energy and knowing how long to sit on is something that has taken me a really long to, to I, I won't even say that I've mastered it. I can't say that I have, but I think it's, I feel like it's something that's taken me an exceptionally long time to figure out how to, how to make a pattern mm-hmm. live as long as it can live. Yeah. Um, and there's a, so many tricks to it. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's like where like the performance template stuff or, or some sort of a pro- effects processor lives to bring yeah. elements in and out and energy up and down. It's I I think of like the Octatrack template stuff or chaos replay or rmx 1000 or db4 or whatever you're using mm-hmm. as like an elevator or escalator mm-hmm. and it's like and it's yeah. just a transition unit it, for you know, the transitional levels. thing i think i think is great i mean i'm sure you were watching since this is your template i'm sure you're watching like how's he using that what's he doing that's different from the way i do it and you see there i use very few things and i use them kind of really sparsely mm-hmm. but for specific things um you know, like it's i i'm not i'm not trying to overuse these any more than i'm trying to overuse a single sound or a single beat or a single pattern or whatever I want to use everything for its place so right. that it, it's it's that it's helping right you know and it's you know it's it's funny because like we talked about this i think on the last stream where when you're producing it's hard to know when is enough and when is too much and when you need to strip things back out again because you've got too much going on and i think that's especially with this much, this many options, the restraint is kind of the important part because I could just throw all 36 voices out there. It would just sound like. I feel like that is, there's also something to be said about, like you were saying, like trying to use the effects sparsely. And I think that's Mm -hmm. smart because overusing the effects is really easy to do because they're, they're fun, right? They're just like huge, huge changes and they just work. Right. But techno that doesn't fly drum and bass. Yeah. Great core. Uh, dubstep. jungle dubstep yeah yeah go nuts go ham yeah. on the effects like EDM, even like any any of those kind of high end energy party music somebody i had his buddy might tell me one time he was high talking energy about party music well it, it's but so a buddy of mine from europe was talking about we were talking about why is is kind of this style of techno more popular in europe than it is in the united states and he was talking about it's a culture that doesn't have a 2 a.m close at the nightclub so you know when you go to the nightclub, you're going for five, six, seven, eight hours. So your mindset is this is going to be a whole evolving night. I have patience 
for what this whole night is going to be. And the music is going to be a soundtrack to my whole night. Here in the States, bars close at 2 o'clock. Nightclubs close it for the most part. Close at 2 o'clock. Nobody goes until like 11 o'clock. So you got three hours to like, you know, slam it out, go listen to your favorite song, have a couple shots, and then whatever. So it's, it, you, you're, you're trying to cram a ton into a really short amount of time. So you have to mix faster. You have to use more effects. You have to build the music up more. It has to be more kind of frenetic music. Whereas with techno, it's the soundtrack for a party night. You know, and th that's why when we were talking about set times, like I love playing like two hour long sets, three hour long sets, even live, because you get a chance to actually take your crowd on a journey through a bunch of and different sounds. And you'll get to sounds. use all 36 of your voices. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. One every few minutes and then I'm good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whereas if you, if your set time, you know, like there's a lot of DJ show now where the set times are 45 minutes. If you're playing tracks really? that are five minutes long, like what the hell for DJ sets? Yeah, like it's awful. Wow. It's a nightmare. They do that so they have a lot of kids out promoting. They're like, "We'll put you on the bill if you promote the show." So let's put ten people in a three-hour-long show. So we get lots of people packed in there, and then we're going to give everybody forty-five minutes out. It's like it's it's this just popped in my head. I was thinking about, of course, uh, last night and the kind of as I because I arranged the set and or the. Last and I put you at the end for a reason, not just because I want you to be the closer and I like that idea of having awesome techno at the end of the night <laughs> where you can go for as long as you feel necessary to go for. Mm -hmm. um, but also because the other performers aren't doing this, right? They're not doing this. And so, for instance, to write a song like, like my tune and so, so many others of the performers, to write those tunes, those tunes can't last longer than four or five minutes. Right. They're, if they do... They're kind of repetitive and they're a little, it gets a little annoying, right? mm -hmm. like not annoying, but like, you're kind of like, eh, I'm ready for the next thing a while ago. You know what I mean? So like to write a two hour long set is like 20 songs. Yep. You know what I mean? And it's 20 intricate details that totally. are pre-programmed with all these mutes that are there. You got to remember what effects to use to get from part to part. It's a, it's a, a huge undertaking. Totally. Um, that being said, it's a different experience entirely as well. And it's, you know, in its own right. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm just, that just popped in my head. It's just like, I can't, you can't do what you're doing without a setup that kind of reacts the way that reacts to you and yeah. lets you improvise as much. I can't improvise as much in this way, even without like, I have like a remixer template that lets me chop up like the melodic mm -hmm. side of my equipment and do stuff. And I can remix it a bit, but it's still at the same time, you're still getting those same, the same music. So maybe right. it'll give you an extra minute or something, but it won't give you an extra money. Yeah. You know and that's, I mean? you know, it's, that's why everybody's setup's different because, you know, I think the, the best way to do it is to really do a setup that does what you need it to do, like build your setup to do like, so it works for you and not against you in your, in your show. And, you know, I think one of the reasons why the electron boxes are so popular is because they can be adapted to a lot of setups. Like right. I can play these in the way I play and you can play them in the way you play, which is totally different, but it's still the same piece of kit. Right. There's a lot of gear that's not like that. Like, you know, we were talking the other day about Roland workflow and the, you know, Roland instruments sound amazing. But to try to do what I'm doing and actually do sound design live on an MC-707 or, you know, anything like that is an absolute nightmare because you have to go into a menu, change a parameter, back out, into a menu, <laughs> so, change so a parameter. The TR-8S folks are going to attack you. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's funny. I just noticed Liam just popped up on here. And Liam and I were talking about the TR-8S because he loves it and it works really well. If you, if you want to set it up in a certain way that goes with how you're going to play, Amazing. Just like the Octatrack would be a nightmare if you were trying to set it up from scratch while you were performing live, like total nightmare. But fortunately for us, people like you exist and you can set it up for us <laughs> and we can just go in and use it in a user friendly <laughs> way. Um, but certain instruments are really hard to perform live. Um, and, and so that's why you don't see them in my setup. Like everything I have here is something that's very live performance. Which brings us to my one nitpick about your setup mm -hmm. is the lack of modulation. <laughs> and I know that that's because of room. I honestly think I think I, like, it's not. Well, what the, I had before this, I had uh, a 6U104 
and I didn't have any modulation. What if you had, okay, we talked about this module already, and I knew you knew I was going to mention this today. Like (laughs) something like the Maestro, Mm -hmm. which offers performative options for modulation. I mean, imagine Mm -hmm. what you could do if you had those six LFOs that you could turn off and on and Mm -hmm. change their time and their attenuation on the model. Mm -hmm. I feel like it would give you, not that you need any more anything, because you set up a sick, but I mean, just imagine it sick. Well, so here's the thing. You were asking, like, what goes through my head while I play. Yeah. I don't think my set would sound as good if my thought was change the LFO, extend the, the length, do this, change the modulation, do the thing. So even if I had something that I could like too performatively many modulate, to to- my head can work really well to go, like, lengthen the envelope. And then I just right. do it, okay, <laughs> like, okay. like it, because it would. It, it, for example, it's the same reason why I don't cue. I originally got this mixer because it has cue, and so I could listen yeah. and I could write something. I never do it either. But I don't cue because I found that when I was doing it, I got distracted and I forgot what was going on, and I forgot to make something happen when I was in a when I was writing. Right. So with this, I just write and chuck it out there and hope it sounds good. And if it doesn't, I fix it really quick on the fly. Okay, Fair or enough. bring it out. Well, what about the PAMs? What's the PAMs doing then? So the PAMs, that's, you know, it's funny, no modulation. So this is my one source of modulation. So right now it's doing two things. It is, it has a clock in and it's clocking the ghost. That's like, it's, this could just go here and the PAMs could leave. So you could take PAMs out and put another voice in. I could. But what I, if you notice the way the PAMs is going right now, every single one of the channels is a different clock division of the clock that's coming in. And I don't have any here with me right now, but usually when I play, I've got more of like these cables just hanging out, doing nothing. This one's pre-patched to that FM thing. Right. But I normally have cables in my pocket when I play. And so if I want something, if I get an idea, I can patch this to a modulation. And these are all set to square wave at different... Um, at different lengths so it gates whatever i plug it into so if i plug it into like the reverb or sidechain or something it'll gate that effect okay and it'll give you that kind of cool like rhythmic gated sound whatever it is and you can do the same on filters you can do the same on you know, filter cutoffs or residents or whatever and you get this cool kind of gated jumping glitchy sound so that's why i have it but i use it sparingly i'm curious have you ever dabbled in ambient so the other day this is going to be such a youtuber weird meta thing the other day <laughs> since dad was at my house <laughs> and we were he just happened to be in colorado this weekend and it was the day before i came over here and we were um he because he plays like kind of down tempo dub techno when he plays his shows and i mentioned to him that when a buddy of mine was over recently um we were midi sync together and he was playing a show with me but he was opening and he plays kind of dub techno stuff so he i was like i wonder what it would sound like my same voices my same setup my same everything but if i just brought the tempo down and so i did so i'll show you this just because it's so funny check it out so like we brought it down to like what's the dub techno like 108 i think is that's what synth that told me that's like that's dub techno that's like like, what that's like OG dub techno because to me i always like so yeah, I mean, it's, I think so, <laughs> but it's, you know, so just, so what I did is I filtered down my kick and took the resonance off and the envelope off so you don't get the, like oh, the slap. Get the transient Because that's not, there. that's not super W is when the kick is like hitting you in the face. But now if we go into this exact same thing. As soon as you bring a kick in, though, it's kind of it's like not ambient, anymore. right? Well, I mean, I could take that out, but if we were doing like the dub techno thing, that's okay, what it was yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not a bad vibe at all. I kind of like it. 
each kind of vibe. So if you're playing yeah. early in the night, you do this kind yeah. of thing. This is a good early, this is a good opener. Right. This is, you should actually, you should get a mask or something. And you can open <laughs> and close. <laughs> there you go. I'll open for myself and then I'll just rip the mask off and just go like and slamming. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be funny as hell. Are you, are you digging the new synth engines in Rhythm OS 1.7? Um, yes, although I'm not using the synth engines a ton, I am, so like the, the, the way I have this set up so that it's always kind of the same no matter what kit I'm in is it's like kick, these are both rumbles, this is a clap or a snare, um, closed hat and a 16th kind of a closed hat, but that's not a symbol, so it's something else that's 16th notes, and then these two are open hats, so if I'm using this one, I'll use this open hat so they don't choke each other. And if I use this one, I'll use this open hat so they don't choke each other. Smart. So it doesn't kind of take okay. away from the, the rhythm. Do you ever do But the... these four pads, I do other stuff with. Which so one? that's why I'll use like a synth engine or sample. Oh, right. Something. Do you ever do uh, uh, like crash on deck at the same time? Like um, that. I don't usually do crash, but I have actually the way this is set up here. Bring my tempo back up to techno tempo here. Get out of this dub techno crash. <laughs> so I have my clap set up just by default to be on the kick. And you were talking about like, how do you add yeah, more yeah, energy? Yeah. That's another one of those things. Yeah, for sure. And then you could just like get more energy into the thing. But yeah, so I usually would do that with a clap or a snare more than i do with the crash but okay. how yeah. many kits do you have programmed like during a 11. set do you look okay you have 11 kits in this project and that this is like your main project that you just like write a new kit when you want to write a new set? yes okay. this is you you want to know something funny this is the only project okay because i don't save any <laughs> so it's the only project and those kits have become kind of a variation of what I'm into at the moment. So right. like that kit number six that is here, that's all I used last night. Okay. And like when I play now, I'll kind of use a kit for a show. What if you want like a new kick drum? I'll change it. That's the ability with the with having layering. So like this kick drum. So if I wanted to bring in a different you'll change it with a synth engine. Yeah, so I'll um so I've got a I've got sampled kicks in here that I can bring in. Got some 909s or something. stump you with not really to stump not, me not with to stump you i'm joking uh <laughs> no you when you said i put reverb on the kick i don't think that's a bad thing at all like mm -hmm. that's i don't think that's silly i think that's pretty normal in a lot of uh, as long as it's production subtle. as long as it's subtle yeah. and it brought me to because i've been doing some lessons and i was teaching how to mix on hardware and uh why don't you teach me how to mix on your hardware what do you do <laughs> how are you mixing on here like what do you what are your go-to's what wish, are your tools like i wish i had a good answer for that so it's for me it's really listening and it, it making sure that you know they say when you're when you're actually doing mixing like in the computer and stuff like that that the easiest way to mix is to get good sounds in the first place so you don't have to mix right so that's kind of like unintentionally kind of what i live by here is that if the sound fits where where I need it to go, I don't have to, like it's, it then is not a problem if I don't have EQ or compressors or whatever, because I don't need to fix a bad sound. I'm just trying to get a sound that goes there. And if it doesn't go, I'll tweak it with filter or with resonance or things like that to, to make it fit in. But we don't have, in your, only on your syntax, on your digital engines and your black box, really have that option tweaking it with the filter i mean you have low pass i'm assuming you're mostly using low pass filters on on here right because I'm, I'm watching a yeah, bit but mostly. i mean because the because the rhythm doesn't have the bass width filter right that we have over here and i'm like i live and die by the bass width so i'm like a total psycho about 
<laughs> right. No, I think it's it's really for me like the the thing that I do prepare in advance is the sound design part. So I'm I'm getting these sounds kind of dialed in. I'm tightening them up as much as I can. If a sound is is just too broad in the frequency spectrum, I can't use it. Like it's it, because like you said, there's no way to kind of tame it. Everything has a spot. Yeah. You know, like okay. if everything had an EQ8, that would be awesome. And I could just kind of <laughs> sure like would, make it? it all just the way I wanted to. You got to push three, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but but that's the thing is it it, it just kind of has to fit. Um, and so, and if it doesn't, you know, I'll mix with volume more than probably anything else. So like if I'm playing a kick and a rumble, like these two. So this is, this rumble is in the background of what you're just listening to. And that's the kick by itself. And that's with the rumble. So like, I have to bring the rumble down in volume so it doesn't interfere too much with the kick. Okay. Um, so you yeah. You did like last time I had you over, you explained your rumble kick technique. Mm -hmm which is different than my rumble kick technique. Could you run me through it? Just sure. a brief one again. Yeah, so so basically, if we go into my kick track, see, it's, it's pretty much that. That's a, that's a um, parameter locked. Right. It doesn't happen all the time. Step. And then if we go into uh, the rumble side, I have the rumble sequenced. And you'll see that this one is a little bit more rhythmic. So like a lot of times I'll do just triplets or, or not triplets. I'll just do like these three and I'll change the velocity. So the, the up beat. So the three, seven, 11, 15 is higher velocity than the other one. So it gives you that kind of bouncy rumble. But with this one. Is you, are you ducking? No. That's what so, the velocity. That's the right. duck. Yeah, I mean, it's ducking with velocity, but I'm not, I don't have anything that's acting as kind of like an envelope follower or as a side chain or anything like that. Can you imagine if we had envelope followers? I mean, we Pretty do sweet. here, but like we don't anywhere else. Yeah, really. I'd have to send this to a different channel through other modules and it yeah. would just be. So you can hear that this is more kind of rhythmic with that kind of four on the floor kick. So that's the kick without it. Then oh yeah, like it's. It, like it, as soon as I once you hear it with the rumble, you can't, yeah, you can't go back. <laughs> yeah, you know it's, I mean? it's true. And then I, this is also a rumble on this with track. A different, yeah. So sequence. I actually have these almost the same. Notice that like it's a little bit. There's different. only a couple steps that change, but this is a different sound and a differently designed sound. So if I go from this kick to this room, and then I switch to. The, that one, the filter is actually higher. Oh. So it's there's still rumbles, but they're just different sound versions. Because it, so. tra it translates really well over the subs. Yeah, that's it. I was telling you last night because it's hard to know. Like you have to kind of trust your like your experience that it's gonna sound good with a whole bunch of subs yeah. and because like in headphones or on your speakers at home it you just don't have that kind of low-end response unless you have some like monster sub in your studio at home right so yeah you just have to kind of trust that it's gonna it there. did it yeah. sounded great the subs were kicking and one of the keys to that and i think we heard it with um who's the steven steven the yeah, other yeah, guy played Project technology 32. Side. so he had that that rd9 the, and that 909 kick there's a reason why techno people love it and why house people love it is because even though it sounds like this flat nothing kick in your headphones, when you play it on a system that has subs, it feels like somebody punches you in the it chest. Was, we were saying that we were all getting massages from yeah, the R9. Totally. And it's this it's just this weird thing about that frequency. And one of the keys to that really is the high end of it, the, the actual punch of the kick. And that's why, like, uh, even on my kicks, if you if you notice, like, the, the filter's way down with a little bit of resonance, but the envelope's up, and that's to get that punch, that mm -hmm. slap in the, the transient in there. If I bring that, it just sounds like nothing. And if I bring this up, 
that the slap gets lost in it because it's kind of cluttered. But if you can do it this way, where you get just the slap from it, just, I don't know. It's so funny to it's me. Like, I love. just, it's, it's like, for me, I hear like when, when I listen to what you're doing and I like it, when the whole production comes in and we got these voices coming in, the hats have come in, you got your 16th notes that are coming, you play a sample, it's just like this whole thing comes in, it's so big, it's awesome. Energy is so huge. Some of the sounds, like, on their own, I would spend so much time doing everything I can to get away from the, that's, because to me, I'd be like, this kick is yep. too big, or it's muffled or something. Yep. But that's because of my, I make different kind of music. Mm -hmm. When you do it, it's just kind of like a, a just makes your brain crack open <laughs> because you're just like, there's no right way ever. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's no like, the, this is the way. Yeah, to do we, something because we talked about that last this sound. There's no rules. Absolutely monstrous and badass, and it's. I would have such a hard time sound designing your music. Mm -hmm. Like I don't naturally just know how to like. I could follow my instinct. Like my way of learning to how to do stuff is I'll, I'll go on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I have a song play that I like, and I play it, and I pause it, and I go on my machine, and I sound design. I play, I pause, I go on machine, I sound design until I mimic exactly what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And then I just memorize how to that recipe for mm -hmm. sound design. And that's how I learned to sound design. It's like, it's like learning how to play guitar. It's the same technique you do if you want to learn how to play Sweet Home Alabama or right. whatever. Uh, just to do it with sound Smoke design. on the water, man. That was my first guitar <laughs> song. Yeah, right. <laughs> so that is, uh, but the sounds that you use, they're not ones that... I have gravitated towards naturally. Where did you get your, what, what influenced you? Where did you come up with your palette for techno? Who are know. your influences? Wow. I mean, like today, well, like going back, we talked about this when we were setting up earlier. Like I come from, uh, like I played guitar in like blues rock cover bands. So that wasn't what I was playing back then, like in high school. But I was listening to, this was like late 80s, I was listening to everything electronic. So it was either, you know, Depeche Mode and New Order, or it was Nitsarev and Front 242. And then in college, it was like Nine Inch Nails and Ministry. And so it was very much this electronic sound. A lot of it had come from, you know, techno had kind of gone from Detroit to Europe and then bounced back to the States at that time. And so by like the, by the early mid 90s, it was um, this really cool, electronic, grimy, like I, I watched this documentary recently that was talking about like the, the origins of techno. They were talking about in Detroit, why did people not make house music? Because it's Motown. It, like you would think it would be soulful and rhythmic and whatever. So they were doing it because in the late eighties, when they were kind of inventing techno music, it was the sound of the factories that they worked in and the factories that were shutting down and the, the technology that was changing. And Detroit was this really kind of mechanized city. So the sound influence in the music was really mechanical and really kind of metallic and harsh. And so that I was hearing that in the music that I was listening to and kind of the old Detroit techno and then the, the, as it kind of evolved in, in Europe and Germany in particularly, it really became that sound palette. And even today, like the, the music from Germany, the techno music, it's, it's just different. It just, they, it's just it played different, it sounds different, the sound palette's different. Like probably today, one of my favorites that I listen to all the time is a German producer performer named Rodhead. And he, if you've watched any of the Stur live events, oh, yeah. he was in the first one. Those ones, those 80. are bananas. So, so cool. The one at 80, the first year, there was a guy with like a red beard and long red hair. That's Rodhead. Rodhead means redhead in German. Oh. So that's like where his name came from. But um, so he does everything from, he has this ambient project that's called Out of Place Artifacts that he does with another guy. And it's this super kind of cool, atmospheric, amazing um, electronic music and then he plays this super great techno and his live sets and his dj sets are fantastic and stuff like that so yeah there's a lot like that i love artists as well um in kind of the live arena like surgeon oh yeah one that surgeon's I, I one of my absolutely favorites. adore um 
Lady Starlight is amazing. Had a chance to play with her last year, and it was just unreal. Dasha Rush, um, Nadia Stravig. Like, there's some really, really great artists out there that are doing electronic stuff today and sort of kind of hear the way they do it and kind of, I don't know, I watch a store video and I'm like, I feel like I'm going to school. I'm just like, right. oh my God, this That's is how like, I feel. Did you see that? Did you see that? That right was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> totally different level. <laughs> Those guys are, man. I went to the AD I event, not this past it. year, but the year before. And there's this balcony around and they kind of play on the center of the downstairs floor, but you can go on the balcony and you can look down and watch everything they're doing. And I sat there for like six hours and just watched every move. And I would hear something like, where's that coming from? Who's doing that? How is that happening? Like, how, how's this organized? How did they, how did they make this, this happen? Yeah. And it's, I've never seen anything like it. Absolutely never seen anything like it. There's Maybe amazing. one day you'll, you'll play this. Yeah. I mean, it was inspirational to me a couple of years ago to really go all in on the live thing, like the improvised thing, because when I saw them play for seven straight hours, four people plus, um, plus, uh, Speedy J who's kind of organizing right. everything. He's running the mixer, right? Yeah. Nothing pre-performed, nothing pre-planned. They don't rehearse they don't do any of it. They, there, it's they, MIDI sync though. They clock. That's the clock. it. Okay. It's just clocked. And they they all they're basically they're collaborating the whole time. And Speedy J is listening kind of like a collaborator as well as a DJ. He's hearing what they're putting in in his headphones because he can cue. He's got two uh Allen and Heath mixers. So he can hear everything summed from what they're playing. And if he hears something that will go well, he'll bring that in. And he has effects and he has a 909. And that's kind of his thing to kind of keep it moving along. If things kind of fall apart, he's got the 909 to go back to, which okay. is awesome. I didn't know that. That's yeah. cool. And, and then he's bringing it in and filtering and changing and moving stuff in and out and doing breakdowns and drops and buildups using what they're submitting. And so they're just kind of like, they're getting ideas and throwing stuff out there. He's hearing it and going, yeah, that works and bringing it in. So it's like this, this collaborative, like, Borg mind where they're Borg all mind. doing the same thing and it, it's it blew my mind it totally blew my mind i want to go over here and let you God, see the, some of the chat your chat is the most active chat i've ever seen on a live stream <laughs> like people like to talk everybody's in there um here's where we are right now honey smack you want to talk about another fantastic improvised techno artist check out honey smack if you don't know him go check out his stuff his stuff is unbelievable so oh nice definite shout out yeah. he is so good That's he actually cool. has a doctorate in electronic music if i'm not wrong Wait, so we can, can call get, him you dr do honey smack <laughs> yeah a doctorate in electronic music that sounds awesome <laughs> dr honey smack and he plays like on th on uh 303 day the other day he put up a video of a show that he played with just a 909 and two 303s oh that's and i was like oh hell yes it's just so good. Let's see if we can recall. I don't know if this lets me do that. Comments like that. Oh, it doesn't. Um, okay, I want to go back to this comment right here. Delano876 says, what's the best groove box to use along with any da? My answer to that would be, I'm not sure why you would want to use a groove box with a da. <laughs> no, and, and I would say, for, like hardware with a DAW, <laughs> but the point of a groove box is to do all of it in a box. Right. So if you were doing all of it in a box, you wouldn't need the DAW. And if you have the DAW, you wouldn't need all of it in there's, a box. I mean, there's some good counterpoints here. Electron are groove boxes and they have overbridge. True. So if you're going to use a groove box with a DAW, use an electron box with overbridge. I mean, that for sure, especially if you're answer. going to multi-track. And if, you're, if your DAW is going to be just your recorder to record your groove box, there is no other option other than electron box with, mm -hmm. with overbridge because anything you're playing, you just multi-track in. Oh, you know what does do multi-track like it? It's the poly and play. Oh, really? Yeah, it does 14 channels of multi-track. That's awesome. That's very that's, cool. I did not unique. know that. I wonder if there's some way to get USB multi-track out without using a laptop, if if there was some device that let us get that, I don't know. I mean, ADAT, of course, does that. Push kind of lets you do something like yeah. that, but I don't know. 
are you, so this guy's talking to you, Patrick, are you, Serco, using anything like the boom or heat to glue it all together? Um, in this setup, I am not, and I did not last night either, which... Do you usually? I debated bringing, I usually use a heat. I debated bringing it, couldn't fit it in my setup. I was going to ask to borrow yours. <laughs> I was like, no, I'll just go without and see how it sounds. And it sounds fine. Like really, again, for what I do, it sounds fine. And what I've, do you use it for anyway? Um, like so I have this one preset that I built in my heat and that's all I've ever used it for. I just run through that. I put on that preset and I go, which is um, my, my super secret, not secret at all, because I've talked about it on my channel, but um, I use a high pass filter on the main. I bring the, the frequency down to about 22, 25 Hertz. And then I add some resonance and it gives you a resonant boost at like between 35 and 55 Hertz. And it absolutely makes your low end slam. <laughs> like it's crazy. And then to counter that, so it doesn't sound too off, I use the EQ to add extra high end. Um, and then I use, you know, it's got all the different drive circuits. I use the second one just to add kind of a master saturation on everything, just like I would if I was mastering a track in Ableton. Okay. I always put a saturator on and just light saturation just to kind of fill out the harmonics and make the, the thing sound more full. Okay. And so, yeah, that with drive. And that's my, uh, that with drive. That's my analog okay. preset. What about, let me turn this off in case it's generating any noise. What about... Um, what about the bass to mono and the compressor? Are you using um, my comp the compressor setup that I use? I, I tr actually turned it down a bit because the, with the, the power down a little bit, uh, turned the threshold. Oh, the threshold. Oh, you made it compress more. No, less. Sorry, oh, less. I turned the threshold okay. up um, because yeah, it was compressing too much for me. It was cutting out sounds, and so I just moved it up a little bit. But I do still use it okay. in there. I just like made it use less of what it was yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like my kick was knocking everything else out. For sure, the kick <laughs> so, would just like yeah, it was, like your it was a little huge. it was a little hard. Um, but yeah, so with the so with the heat plus effects, then I also use the bass mono. You do um, use thing. It. Yeah. So okay. I, um, and I do the same, like when I produce in Ableton on my mastering chain that I built, which my mastering chain is only Ableton stock plugins, except for ozone. I love that. And I'm the same. Actually. Uh, yeah, yeah. I use, I use ozone as my, uh, it's too good not to like use, but quick, everything else quick master, quick yeah. limit, like yeah. just get shit done. Yeah. And so with that one, um, I, I do the base mono using utility and I'll just put a utility at the beginning of that, as well as like, I, I mono my normal tracks, like that are like the kick and things like that, that I want to be mono. But then on the master, I'll mono everything below about 125 Hertz or so. Okay. Um, sometimes all the way up to 200, it kind of depends on what I'm doing cool. and how much is down there that needs to be mono. And, uh, yeah, so my, my thing is I'll do that and then I'll listen to it on my phone speaker in here if I can still hear the low end. If it hasn't phased, then I know I'm good. Okay. So, yeah. No, this is good but, tips. I'm sure a lot of yeah. people, because a lot of people want to know, like, what do you what do you do after the fact? Mm -hmm. And um, I know that you are just taking a master out from the hidden Octatrack under here. Yeah. <laughs> you can and, just see the strip. That's it. Yeah. I mean, like, are you like... I should put this. Yeah. So now it looks super cool with does the new, look, it does with the new magnet strip. <laughs> as soon as I get them out, all finished. Um, we were talking earlier about releasing music. Like mm -hmm. what, and both of us kind of have this, a similar thing. We're both really into live music. That's like definitely where we connected, right? Yeah. And um, so what do you do? Well, interesting. I've been releasing for couple decades as well and um under different monikers so if you go on bport you can find my music um i used to release a lot of techno stuff as eric bingham which bingham is my mom's maiden name so i kind of went by that um and then i have released a couple things as circo when i first started that name which are like these super like um groovy ibiza sounding deep house tracks oh I'd love and to hear then that. i released them look them up and then i released um for a while as ricard which was a name that i dj'd under for a long time when i was playing a lot of house music um and when i did that i had releases like on tracks records from chicago like the old school house label and um head candy and like a bunch of those older labels and stuff which was super cool um and then when i really got into the live thing i said you know what i'm i i i 
I want when people come to a show, if they like what they hear and they go, wow, I want to go find some of your music. I'm going to go on Beatport. If they then went and found a track that was produced in the box or even with hardware, but like mixed out everything just exactly where it should go and no kind of, you know, humanity to it. I was like, well, they would, it wouldn't sound like what they heard. Right. So they'd be like, well, I like this, but I don't like that. And vice versa. If they like a track and then they come and listen to me play, they're like, well, that didn't sound like the track that I heard. And so I haven't released anything for just over three years. And it was because I didn't want to until I felt comfortable enough with my live setup that I could produce on this and record it as if I was recording into a tape recorder with a single track, like a single stereo pair. And so um, I've just finished my first couple tracks um, just last weekend. And so I've got a bunch of stuff that's going to be coming out um, very soon. Um, in the next couple months, I'll have the first uh, first couple tracks coming out. And then I have a few EPs that I've lined up after that as well. Oh. So, but it's all, um, again, going along with the improvised thing, what I do in order to produce now, and it, I kind of arrived at this, I got inspired by this artist from the Netherlands named Rod 20. Um, he also played Stuart, actually. Oh, did he? Yeah, he, um, and he's an old house guy who's who switched over to techno. He's been a huge house DJ in, in Europe for a long time. His name is uh, Benny Rodriguez. Um, he released this Rod 20 series of recordings, which were 20 EPs all recorded in in a single take and not produced. Like, they I they mastered that. at the end, like you put it in the box and mastered it to right, make right, it right. kind of sound normal. But everything was recorded in in a single take, nothing edited afterwards. You don't go back in and chop out that mistake you made. You leave it right in. And he released 20 EPs on vinyl. That's dope. Of that and i was like if i'm gonna produce again that's how i'm gonna do it i love that because i'm because i'm the same way like every time that i record something or anything i put on like soundcloud or whatever they're always live performances mm -hmm. i don't have i don't multi-track my stuff even though i have in the past but i don't get as much joy out of it as i do like because okay here's a, it's a joy thing. killer to it go into your multi-track and have to rearrange it unless it's like yeah <laughs> it's unless you make it like your job you know what i mean like it's it's yeah. like somebody's like this is what i need this is the request i have um but like for instance a question i get all the time mm -hmm. from octatrack people is what do i do i want to multi-track my stuff so i want to do overbridge they want to multi-track but they also want to use the octatracks effects mm -hmm. on their master they can't right, right. to multi-track the uh, the one thing i will i'll just tell this to people what you can do, what you can do is record a multi-track of your performance and then take a send from Ableton out back into your Octatrack and then process and play, your, record yourself playing the effects. That's the answer to the question. Couldn't you also set up a send in Ableton? Yeah. Not run anything through the Octatrack on the way in, just overbridge into uh into ableton send out to the octatrack and then send that octatrack out back into a channel you could and then you could play it live and record the multi-track at the same time yeah it sounds like a latency frenzy. might be well but if it's ableton but that's I, yeah you fix. can't we can't correct it yeah i guess yeah. i guess that's I don't know. I've been thinking about the same thing. Yeah. And then I was like, no, if I start down that road, it's a long, I'm going to, I'm going to end up multi-tracking again. And that's not what I want to do. Right. I want to, I, and the, the, the struggle for me was getting over the, like, am I going to re release a Dallas jam as a track? Do you like that term? No, I don't. And that's why I was like, I don't, and it's not just a dollish jam. The idea like, is the, like the way I'm, sometimes. the way I'm creating stuff to produce now is I'll sit down and I'm doing a sound design session. I'll come up with some sounds that I really like how they go together. And I'll go, you know what? I can perform this into a track mm -hmm. and I'll hit record 
and I'll start recording it and I'll record it into a track. I'll put a little timer on the side so I can see how long it is. So I don't just like go on for hours and I'll kind of go through and I'll structure and be like, okay, I feel like it needs a break right here. I'll do that. I, I made this sound that I liked and I'll use that for my break and then I'll come back in and then I'll do that. So the, these first tracks that I've been doing are very much like that. So they're, I'm setting out to do them as a track but everything is performed in live using things like the ghost, you know, like having this stuff that you could never do in a DAW. You couldn't duplicate what I'm doing with this no, after yeah. the fact in a DAW. It would sound It would different. not be possible. So, okay, check this idea. I want to see what you think. Okay. So imagine the Audacity got updated recently. Okay. Our favorite DAW of all time. <laughs> <laughs> Audacity, the best DAW ever. Um, it actually really is one of the best DAWs ever, like straight up. That's a utility from heaven. It does yeah. so much batch export, all that. It's, it's awesome. They recently updated it. They added stem splitting in Audacity. Hmm. If you didn't know this, check this idea out. What if you record your master and stem split the master and then mix the stem split? You could. You can stem split in the new Ozone, right? I don't know. Can you? Yeah. That's news to me. I know no. you can in FL, but... No, I saw... I can't remember who. Somebody did a video about it recently, and they were talking about how to pull a vocal acapella out of a track using the new Ozone. And you could just, like, take ozone, the track... What, is it 12 now? I don't know, because I'm on, like, 8. I'm on, I'm on 8. <laughs> so that's where bad. I'm at. <laughs> it's so bad. It's like with your template. Like, once I get something I like, I don't really update it very much. But I think on the new Ozone, you can do that. You can pull stems out. Um, which is cool. And I know, doesn't the, didn't the new MPC update? Wasn't that like the, the MPC big got the, big the deal? stem split and that is sick. Mm -hmm. I mean, both, of, I have mad respect for the, MP, I like the old MPCs. I really think are dope. Mm -hmm. Like MCC 5,000, 2,500, 1,000, 500. Mm -hmm. I think those things are so sick for whatever reason. I cannot get excited about MPC live too. I tried it. I, um, I was, I can't remember who, uh, Analog Kitchen used it a lot in his live stuff. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Maybe I'll give that a try. I tried the live too. And what I didn't like about it was what we were talking about earlier, where if something is a, is a, a multi unit, like it does everything as a groove box, the more it does, the deeper you have to dive into menus to do stuff. So that does so much inside that software, but you have to go page into the effect, change the effect, page back out, go into the next thing and change that thing, go back out. And so it was a lot of that. And the workflow, the, and I'm, I've been spoiled by the workflow and the electron machines totally. It's, it's the easiest and best one for my brain, at least. Whereas here, like you've got eight parameters and you've got eight knobs and they affect like, this one is always that one. This one's always that one. On the NPC live, there's like those four knobs on the side. And sometimes the parameters were next to it. What do they and call sometimes it? they call it, uh, there's a name for it. The Q links. Whatever. What yeah. And, but they're, they're vertical on the side of the screen. And sometimes the parameters they control are right next to them vertically. And sometimes they're across the bottom of the screen. So I'm like, when it's there, is it, is it that one, that one, or is that like, right. which Instead one is of it? knowing that yeah, these like eight this lines, these eight. This. my mind needs something simple. Yeah. And this is simple i'm on this screen it's those eight i'm on this screen it's those eight it's kind of funny because i've had so many people be like okay i teach a lot of octatrack stuff right and uh they're like it's so menu divey i'm like no it's not the the <laughs> thing that's hard the electron stuff isn't menu divey at all actually there's only it goes down like two windows deep mm -hmm. ever really yeah unless you go into the personalized section and then you're a three or yeah. whatever it's obtuse it's abstract yes. from other instruments. That's why it's hard. It's like grasping parts and that kind of stuff. Uh, but in terms of like the actual depth of how hard you have to dig for things, it's actually pretty upfront, even on the Octatrack. Yeah. And little totally less so upfront, upfront on, on the new machine. On the new boxes, like the new, super the new boxes simple. are so yeah. simple. Like, yeah, and really anybody, I'm sure there's not anybody who watches your stream who doesn't do electron boxes, but if there's anyone who didn't, just the idea that you you want to go to your sample menu, you're there. You don't have to go menu, 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 select, whatever. You want to go to your source, you're there, and you've got your parameters, and it's only ever too deep. So you can either click or you can double click. There's not anything more than the two levels 
on any of the pages and the pages are all button per function. Like you want to go to that page, you're there. And with everybody else's workflow, with whether it's Roland or MPC or whoever, you have to go through different layers or there's menus to select from or things like that. And this just doesn't have any of that. So anyway. That's true. Yeah, we're, n we're not here to knock any other brands. Yeah, no, and, and again, <clears throat> I know plenty of people that use those machines because it works well for them. And that's why I said, this is what works best for my brain. Right. And for other people, they look at this and they're like, that's not the way my mind thinks at all. Right. Like, for, like, I have this mental block with the M8, and I've told you this before, I still have it. I really want to learn it. But there's this mental block with the vertical workflow and, and that stuff. And I know it's just a sideways electron workflow. I, I know it is. This machine for you <laughs> that I think you'd really like. Yeah. Right here. You know. <laughs> Which, <laughs> for as much as I rip on this, I do love it as a machine. I think the the way it looks, I think the way the the interface works, I think the way it feels is great. I think everything that you can do inside that box is amazing. For me, I need to then be able to translate it either to a live performance on this gear or to my DAW if I'm going to be making it into a track. So now what replaces that for me? like when I travel, if I need something, is the Oxy-1, because since it's battery powered, I can use um, any synth on my phone because it has um, Bluetooth MIDI. So I can be on the plane with my phone using the Moog thing, or I can use AUM if I want multiple synths, I can use whatever, and I can just sit there with that. I can program patterns, I can go, oh yeah, that's cool. Do I want to do this? Oh yeah, when I fly on a plane, like, oh, I want to use that in a track. Okay, cool. Then I get home. All I do is plug this in and route it to my Polybrute or my Sub 37, and it works. And you can't do it with that machine. You really if I do write need something, to get into the M8. I want to. It would really. I should have brought it with me so we could like over dinner tonight. You could show me how them. to use it. I have to. I have a third one on the way. <laughs> my God. No, I love, I love it. That talk about look and feel and like tactile experience. That M8 is a sexy machine that it works really well. I also need to update the Polyon Tracker Mini because it came out with an update and now it has stereo sampling, which I thought it had to begin with. I didn't realize it didn't have it to begin with. I thought it did too. Yeah, I thought that was like one of the things. I don't know. So that was weird. But I do need to update that. Have you ever have you tinkered on that thing yet? I haven't. Have you played on the any of the Polyon stuff? The play. The play. What mm -hmm. do you think of that? It's cool. I like it. It's very improv. Like you can mm -hmm. do this. Yep. In the play. Pretty close. You, you could. It, again, it goes down that thing where you've got to go into a menu to use the knob and then go to a different menu to use the knob, mm -hmm. which it can do it, but it's kind of like a, like the MC-707 can do all this stuff too, but it's not all kind of evident. <laughs> the MC-707, <laughs> I don't know. Comparing anything to the 707, I feel like that thing was so hard for me to wrap my head around yeah. like what to do with it because the menus are so it's like deep 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 and it's a little teeny box little... Well, it does so much yeah on a thing that has a screen that's like the size of a watch right like that that was their mistake they they just needed a slightly larger screen but it has all the good sounds the sounds are great yeah they really are i mean roland sounds are awesome yeah. i just wish their workflow was more user-friendly for me uh... my friend told me it's hostile it's a hostile workflow. Right, right. Like it works against you. That's like the housing environment in Seattle. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Man, your chat is going crazy. <laughs> Mikey, M8 mentioned. Mikey played an amazing show last night. He did. That was awesome. By the way, somebody wrote in there, WMD closed down. They did not. They are back. Um, they broke off into AMMT, which is about to release their first module, which is a um, a hi-hat module that is so cool. It's really badass with like being able to blend samples together. Kind of like, it's it, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I was talking and, with uh, Alex. I'm hoping to snag one of those. Yeah, they're, it sounds awesome. And the, the samples that it comes with are all like from his drum kit at home because he's a drummer. Like yeah. he, he started off as like a rock drummer. I love Alex. He's such a yeah, cool dude. He's, he's the best. One of the most talented modular synthesists I know yeah, in the world. He can use the same rack and play a slam and techno set in a club in Berlin. And then the next night use it to play like Groovy Deep House and he doesn't change his rack at all. That's sick. It's like, he's nuts. He's, he's pretty amazing. heavy on the on the assimilator. He's an assimilator he guru. Yeah, he I is, definitely. It is a hard 
module. To learn. It's a hard module to squeeze a lot out of, just like the Octa Track. Like yeah. you can do the basics. It's kind of like dig attack basics. It does some basic. slicing. Ah, uh, the slicing workflow on it is like eh, I feel like it's a little mm -hmm. bit of a miss. But I think yeah. like the sound quality of it is beyond any any other sampler I own. Yeah. It is the best sounding sampler. Uh, at second to my computer. Yeah, and the, what I love about it, again, we talked about that. I love grimy sounds. I love that you can reduce Face down. You, you could redu reduce down the quality of the oh, samples okay. individually. Have and you it's, played with the phase? Yeah, a little bit, but it's kind of right? a little bit. Yeah, you know? it's a little bit beyond me, but yes, I'm starting to. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just now getting into it. But because you could run one of your oscillator outputs mm -hmm. into the CV input and then do phase modulation, you can get that distortion you like so mm -hmm. much. It'll, it does a really good. Yeah, time. I mean, I could run this one into it. Which yeah, there would you be go. Great. I mean, that's already there. So yeah, that's it's cool like that. But anyway, back onto WMD. So William, that started WMD, is coming out with some new modules. Um, not he's not talking about them yet, so I won't spill the beans here, but there's a lot of cool stuff coming out. And he's also still supporting all the old modules. And there's going to be some things that are, um, he just reissued a are bunch of modules. Are you talking about modules. William Matheson? Yeah, right William now? Matheson. Okay. Um, he just actually released, he still had a bunch of parts. Um, one of the reasons why WMD ceased for a while was they weren't able to get chips like everybody wasn't able to. And they had a ton invested in the other components of what they were building. So they had all this money in, in uh, inventory without any chips to finish it, to actually right. sell stuff. So many people stuck in that. Right, so he finally got in a bunch of chips and was able to build out that inventory. So he just blasted out a bunch of things that um, on their site just within the last couple of weeks that are available again in limited quantities. And then he's gonna be coming back out. All the analog stuff is gonna be WMD and all the digital stuff is gonna be AMMT. So okay. effects and digital oscillators and stuff like that. So this will be WMD this and Metron. Metrons will be AMMT. I because that's digital. think Metron is gonna also so still be Metron, WMD. I thought there was gonna be like a Metron V2 or something, hopefully. I, I mean, I, I think they're working on V2s for everything that they're gonna keep going with. Oh, that um, But I think, I think Metron and um, Performance Mixer are both staying WMD, and then module-wise, it's gonna be digital versus analog. Funny enough, I just emailed William <laughs> this morning to tell him my address so that I could RNA my Performance Mixer because after five years, I've had the, I've had the Performance Mixer for about five years, six years, five mm -hmm. or six years. Uh, it's been my go-to. It's been my mixer, you know, my Eurorack mixer for everything. I have the expander, other expanders, like I have the whole shebang. I wasn't paying attention. This is embarrassing. I'm going to share an embarrassment because this happens to all of us. I worked at the synth shop and like, trust me, I've destroyed stuff. Um, but I accidentally forgot because it has a 16 pin and it has a 10 pin in the back. And I powered my, tried to power it through the 16 pin on accident because I wasn't paying attention. And I burnt my aux ends, the op amps for the aux ends, I burnt them out. And so now to replace it is going to be like $200 to get that fixed. Something roughly, I imagine, with shipping and the, and the resources to put it together for their hourly wage. But it is still the de facto banger performance mixer. It is. It is. And there's, there's been some great mixtures that have come out recently. I mean, there was... The, yeah, there's some mixing crazy yeah. right now. And there's some cool ones, like the bartender and the barback. That's a cool combo. The What's the other one? The starts with an X. I remember. There's a um, noise engineering one. Yeah, the noise there's, engineering one. Um, I forgot about Yeah, that. I mean, there's a bunch of cool ones. There's the blue out. box. There's the blue box. One, which the is blue the one box. I'm currently interested in, but I don't Tell like... It doesn't have the knob per function. It doesn't have knob per function. And the one thing I think they missed, and hopefully it's something they can fix with firmware update, is that it's got USB-C out, but it doesn't have per track um, audio over USB. So you can stem within the machine and you can record onto SD card within the machine, but you can't take that out multi-track over oh, USB. computer. So it's not so, an audio interface. Right. So for example, um, what uh, there was a while that I was messing around with using a computer as a mixer. We were talking about that for a while. And I had um, the um, ES9 
mm -hmm. in here so I could patch everything into that and run USB out to Ableton. And then I could multi-track everything that was in here, which was really cool because I could do overbridge with this and this, and then I could send those all out multi-tracked. And it was a cool thing because then I could use the effects in there and it was, it was really cool. But if I wanted to go back to a non-computer setup like this, I'd pull out the ES9, put in the performance mixer, repatch everything. If the, if the blue box would allow you to just stay patched and be either your in-case mixer or your outboard mixer to a computer, I think it would broaden up a ton who they could sell it to because it would be really flexible. I wouldn't be surprised they did. Though they're great coders, the T10 yeah. people. Aaron's like, not. They're, like, they're that guy's like, like evil genius. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> no, they are. Like with the le I, I'm not a, like a, I don't say anything bad. I do not like the little tiny boxes. Yeah. I love what they tens. do. They sound awesome. Yeah. I they're too small. Yeah. Like they're they did they somehow they squeezed that like incredible sound design potential and pol polyphony and all that. Yeah. Into those tiny little little boxes, but they're so tiny. Yeah. But they sound really good, but yeah. they're so tiny. I, I actually were there I was looking at the lemon drop one, the granulator. Yeah. Um because it can process incoming audio. Yeah. So before I got the ghost, I wanted to use it for the same thing I'm using the ghost for now. So I was gonna send everything to it, have it process using the granulator back into a channel. So that would be my atmospheres. Okay. That would stay in key because it's pr it's processing live audio, and then the ghost kind of has taken that spot, so that moved off my list. But it was I was actually thinking about that for a while to mm -hmm. just use that as that kind of atmosphere background thing. I was using um, at the show when I was because I played like one techno track. Well, it starts out as a techno track. By the end of it, it's like this EDM dead mouse type thing. But um, <laughs> at the beginning, the first two parts of it, the first couple of minutes of it, it's pretty techno, um, close enough at least. And I was using a granulator effect with the chaos replay. And I was, cause I've been trying to like figure out how exactly to use that unit. Mm -hmm. And I really found like, I feel like I found a pretty good sweet spot for it. What you want to do is like when you use an effect, you have to start with your depth down for mm -hmm. like the effect depth. And then you bring it up to like these sweet spots, like the depth right. in. And that's what I found has been a good way to do it. It's kind of similar to what you would do with just like dry wet mix plus plus the or, or the cross or cross effect track crossfader yeah. which you can't see on the screen my hand just like, <laughs> yeah, moving back like what is he doing it's like oh oh I've gotcha. been having so much fun speaking of the your effects template and I'm sure you noticed but like using things just as like like splashes and stuff and not actually yeah, as the full effect like the like this acid one effect. I use this one all the time for that mm -hmm. when I'm playing along like here I can pull in something really quick And then just take the acid effect and just do it. And it gives you that cool like wop, 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 and it gets here. It sounds so cool. And I use that all the time in my performances now because I was just like, I found it I by accident it one day and I was like, that's so cool. <laughs> and a lot of times I'll use a different effect. Like I'll use like the, the high pass with the, with the reverb. And then when I'm ready to drop back in, I'll switch and drop it over. So you, it, it kind of takes that tail and gives it that, that's a different kind of tail than what this has. So I don't know. It's cool. They're fun to play with. I do a lot of stuff. I do. Have a, this is actually my most used effect. Yeah. In my these setup. are mine. These two. Yeah. I'm like, I use, I used to use the Daft Punk what you have labeled as loop, but mm -hmm. what I called the Daft Punk effect. I used mm -hmm. to use it all the time. I use a lot of this one, which is mm -hmm. like on number one on a lot of the performance template effects are these risers, except for party, which mm -hmm. is it's a, a beat repeat, a 16th note beat repeat. And uh, but I like to go into I'll use a build up riser, like a four bar riser, and then I'll drop it into something that's got a lot of space in it mm -hmm. and like a high pass. So it'll like build up, then all of a sudden I'll slam it into an effect while the crossfader is still fully engaged drop into a huge reverb and just splashes and then go into a mix with a new element yeah. brought into it. And I felt like there's a whole bunch of like little combos. Yep, exactly. You can be like, build up here, drop it into this effect for the last four bars, go over here, jump over to an acid delay. I don't know. It's yeah, it makes it, the, it makes it this really playable too. Like it's, you can play the effects rather than just like yeah. reverb delay. You know, yeah, like yeah. you're actually playing it and using it rhythmically in what you're doing. And, you know, as something like those little, those little echo splash things with the, with that acid effect, it's cool because like, you, 
as I was saying before, you, you, there's times when you, you want to change it up, you know, that something needs to happen. And if you're not set up to do something, you can just really quickly do that. And it kind of gives it something else that's a, that's a variation that just, you know, you could just throw in there really easily. Yeah. So, yeah, it's cool. Man. <laughs> the chat, the chatty folks. The chat, it's so, it's just like. <laughs> so Lucas wants to know the model of the case. Model of the case is the Erica Synths. Um, it's uh, 6U84. It comes with these wood cheeks on the side that make it sit like at an angle. But with the wood cheeks, it didn't fit in my carry-on. So I pulled them off. <laughs> but yeah, it's the Erica Synths. Oh, okay. So that's why it looks different because the Erica Synths. Yeah, normally good. normally there's wood cheeks on the outside that are black. And it, it makes it sit. You can actually adjust them so it can sit like this or like this. Okay. Um, but I pulled them off just so it would fit in my, in my carry on suitcase. The Faco hex mix. That's a good, I forgot about the hex. Another mix. great one. Yeah. And that one's got a bunch of expanders too, as well. Here's a good, Pluto Loco is asking a really great question. Have I considered using a DJ mixer for effects? Of course. Yeah, I have. I've considered it several times and there's only like a couple of mixers I've considered, but the one that I would use if someone was like Octatrax are they're poisoning the community. They're they're killing people. Radioactive octatrax <laughs> are radioactive. <laughs> they gotta go. And that's I gonna have... be the sound bite. People are gonna take that and be like, "Easy about that octatrax are radioactive." <laughs> Please don't Watch do out. that. <laughs> uh, don't kill my relationship with. Uh, I'd probably use what Dave Mech uses. I would use a DB4 because it still gives me like. Yeah, they don't looping. make those anymore. What? Yeah. Why? Uh, because Dave Mech's the only one who uses it. Why? I don't know. I, there was a moment when I thought about using one too, and I looked it up, and they're out of. They don't make them anymore. What the fuck? I, I don't know. That's awful. Yeah, it is awful. That's like the only mixer I've ever looked at and thought I would use that. I mean, they're, they're still available, but they're why just are not, they're they not good anymore. mixers for hardware users? The shit out here sucks. All we I, have is the Octatrack. I awesome, had, but like, I had a lengthy conversation with the people at Electron about that at NAM last year, and then again at Superboot. And I, I was mean, like, I have two. If it's you like, if they were to make in the Octatrack box size, or even this size. Like if they really wanted to go crazy, but I think they could do it in the Octatrack box size and make a lot of us even happier. If you did an eight channel mixer with programmable performance effects like this, with multiple outs like this has already. So they've already got all this technology. We're at right? like $2,000 already. Sure. <clears throat> and, then, um, and then you add in the base mono, the heat drive and the compressor just those parts of the analog heat plus effects put it all into a box this size and the dream scenario is come up with a way that you could do uh audio over usb Multitrack. with your with your electron devices so you wouldn't have to run oh yeah cables. You literally like it like it has built in overbridge basically yeah but except not not a full overbridge but just the Fair ability enough. to run the audio so if it was class compliant usb audio it could do that you know what I think, and everyone would buy one. It could be five thousand dollars, and we would we, all sell our cars but to we buy do, them. We have it. We have this device. It's the Push Three. So the reason that I don't use the Push Three is it's so big right. and it's so heavy. And you, you talk about like, like with something like that, if they were able to do that here, have it be knob per function, crossfader. You know, be, be able to have faders for your different instruments, right. just like this, being able to fade things in and out, being able to cue, being able to do all that stuff. You don't have that on the push three. You, I mean, no. you could set things up to use the buttons for it, which would be cool, but you can't, Ira? you don't necessarily have faders. What about that, the Ira mixer? That, you know, for me, every time I've seen that, I was like, just, and I'm, people are going to think I'm bashing and rolling, but they just missed like it's such a great idea and it came out like 10 years ago or whatever mm -hmm. and what a cool thing that only really works with their gear and doesn't really work well with anything else and whatever it's like if if you did the machine that could do what they tried with that and have it be able to use whatever gear if it could do audio over usb from overbridge enabled devices that would make it great for electron but if it also had individual ends that would be unbelievable that would be, I mean, it would be incredibly sick. I do think like the closest thing we have to it is, is the push three. Yeah, I think so. Probably. Or, I mean, like you have mixtures like a this. modular system. Yeah. Like, like you could build it. 
but yeah. I want them to build it. But we're not going to have the audio over USB <laughs> Ultra Track. I want, I want them to build it, so I don't have to build it. Yeah, I want them to build it, too. <laughs> yeah. Get it. That'd be amazing. The most expensive box ever. Ken Flex Pierce, what's up? Hey, Ken. What's happening? Jake, waiting for the new Electron Mixer. Do we think the upcoming Torso S4 will be a decent alternative to the Octo? No. I don't think they're the same. I think same. it's totally different. Uh, they're, yeah, they're just, there's no relationship. I think it's closer to a dig attack than it is an closer to a dig attack. I think that's how they would describe it too. It's closer to a dig attack. Yeah. It it's does a... have effects, but they're not like performance effects. Like it doesn't have scenes designed. And, yeah. Uh, that's what it, makes the Octatrack so cool is that you can make your effects. Like yeah, you what can do whatever you want. Yeah, and combine them any way you want. Like there's a lot of stuff out there that has effects. It's not just a matter of having effects. Having them being able to be customized and like assignable the way this is is so unique. I mean, you'd think somebody else would do that. Like, it's not. I'm just gonna happen. Like, yeah. we can't imagine that it's not gonna happen at some point. Yeah, but it's. I mean, yeah. This is this is what it is. Well, we're coming up to the two hour mark, and I usually kill it at two hours. But I really want you to play some more music for everybody here while I have you here. So, do you want to like? You want to play a. You know, a banger or two for us. Cool. Let's uh, let's write something new. Hell yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I like to just kind of like. Well, we didn't talk much about the oxy, but one of the cool things with these bass lines is I can just kind of program in. So, techno for me, it's always an eight step sequence for bass line, and never more. Because that's mm. part of the kind of hypnotic thing you repeat on eights rather than going not like having something that evolves. rhythm, not like seven. Not for bass lines. Six, it, okay. it, for for me, like kick bass, four on the floor, eight steps, and that's kind of your foundation. Then you throw in a, a polyrhythm on top of that, and it sounds super cool. But if you start doing polyrhythms with your foundational stuff, it's like you know, it's like driving a car with a flat it tire. Like it kind of sounds bass. weird. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like, so I can set out a pattern that just seems like a cool pattern. And then I can go into here and just hit pitch. And I have no idea what that pitch just randomized, but I know it's in key. Okay. And that's what I love about it. So now I can just hit play and bring this in. And this will be what I just made up just there. And I'm digging it. Is that and if I don't that? like it, I can just hit pitch again. I can go back. Oh, oh you can go it. back. I didn't realize that. I like that one better. You've got undo and I redo, like which is amazing on this. And yeah, that's the pizza. Double pepperoni.
everything on there.
Damn, dude. <laughs> I gotta say, I don't that especially the especially the first time. I mean, the whole thing was awesome, but that first part of the pattern was maybe my favorite one I've ever heard. Awesome. That was so sick. There was it was that snare pattern that. Da, 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 da. Yeah, to like da, hitting on the kick. Get, da, da. That's something yeah. about that was just like <laughs> that rhythm, the whole thing, the sound design, the whole thing was just obnoxious. You know what's you know what's the most fun part for me is that I hear it for the first time the same time you hear it for the first time. So you're just and I'll hear something I'm like, oh yeah, like where did that come from? That's so <laughs> cool. I'm gonna keep going. I w one time I saw this interview with Carl Cox and they were like, How do you always know like what to play? when you're playing for these huge crowds and like amazing DJ. And he said, I always throw a party for myself in the DJ booth and I just hope everybody else is into it. And <laughs> I'm the same great, way. Like I'm playing along. I'm like, hell yeah. I like that. Oh, you know what? I want to hear this. And it's like, cool. And then I'll look and see the, it's like, oh, the crowd's into it. Like they're vibing on that too. Or if they're not, I'll be like, well, we're not on the same. So I'll, let's see what I can do here and kind of move it around. But yeah, it's, it's a blast. Dude, that was amazing. And our audience of, uh, of, of lovers, of Circo lovers here. <laughs> Look at all this stuff, dude. People nice. are loving your tunes, man. Love You're it. a great performer. Thanks. I really appreciate you coming out from Denver to come out and play the event that we put on, which was an awesome event with a stellar turnout. Yeah. And you performed Tons like an absolute pro as usual. Your music sounded so good. And thank you so much for sharing all of your knowledge with everybody on this channel, uh, yeah. all of your experience and strength and hope and uh and your selection of stuff that you choose here i'm sure that that people love hearing about what you like to use but just like what do we as uh artists like to use for our live music like why do we pick the stuff we pick yeah. i think that's stuff that it's really valuable information for people and thank you so much for sharing that and i'm sure that like the oxy guy <laughs> yeah loves you right now uh, well, I think you have one thing, but one thing to say to too about like the gear we choose, we choose the gear that we do because it works the best for us. And by no means are we saying anybody else should choose the gear we choose. Like for real, like I, like when I saw Mikey play last night and he was playing with two M8s and a vintage uh, 303 and a DJ mixer. And I was like, awesome. That's so cool because that's, his setup and you play with your setup and everybody plays with their own thing. I play with this cause it works for me. You know, it's like, like that's why. But like, also <laughs> you sharing your insights about what works for you helps mm -hmm. people figure out what works for them. You yeah. know what I mean? Cause not everybody has the, you know, can have all the stuff that's on the table right now or knows what to pick. Cause mm -hmm. there's so many out there now, there's so many options out there. So I think it really helps people pick something that's going to work for them if they want to make something like what you just did, which sounded so freaking cool. And I was just thinking to myself as you're playing, I was like, could I even do that? And I'm like, I don't even know <laughs> if I ever could or will be able to do what you're doing right now. And that's just fine, but it's so cool to witness it. And I know what's happening here, but I still don't know how you do it. Like, I, I know what's happening, <laughs> but I still don't know. You know what I mean? It's like close-up the... card tricks. Yeah. And you're like, you're right there and you like see it. But no, we, you totally could do what I do. And I've said this to you before. You do what I do on your live streams. When you're writing live, the only difference, well, there's two big differences. One is that you save at the end and I don't. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. But what you've done up until the point that you save is very much what I'm doing. And the other thing is you get pulled into the details. And when, when I play like this, I can't afford the time to get pulled into the details. Yeah. So if you just pulled back away from the, the minute adjustment <laughs> that sounds impossible. and stopped saving everything that you do on your streams, like I'll be watching your stream. Like when I, there was that one that I was like, turn it up to 140 or whatever. Yeah, yeah, and you did. When I was watching that, I was like, that's awesome. Like what you're making right now sounds so good. And you could be performing that live right now, but you're like, no, it needs this. And I have to add this and I'm missing a chord progression and it needs a vocal and it needs a, it's like, <laughs> no, like it sounds really good. Just like play that's, that shit. That's my that's my <laughs> thing though. Like I'll go, I'll make a techno track, and then I'll stop. It'll stop being techno because I'll go into my world, which is just easy. Got to let it flow, bro. <laughs> just let it go and flow, bro. That's like what I tell myself when I, yeah. you know, that's what I tell myself. But anyway, thanks, man. Thank You're you. You're the best. I'm so happy let's to be here and had a blast. Let's go get some sushi. Yes. Yeah, Sound and good? nerd out about gear over dinner yeah, instead of doing it on a live stream. Yeah.
Thank you. I'm sure everybody's like, out. oh, they're hanging out. It's like, yeah, we're talking exactly about the same stuff that we're talking about. Oh, yeah, we about actually here. have to stop our conversations and be like, save it for the stream, bro. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, thank everybody for hanging out. This is Eric in from Denver, aka Circo. A total awesome. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> yeah. Great, a great musician, great performer, and we're very lucky to have him here on this stream for a third or fourth time now. I keep bringing you on because I just love picking your brain and the way you articulate your ideas and your choices. You're very well spoken about this stuff and you know what you're talking about. Thanks again. Thanks, so, Thank you. Look forward to seeing y'all next week on another live stream. Yeah, thanks for tuning in. Take care. Yeah.